Chris Everett and Virginia Wade, rivals on the courts. Chris is the most solid player in the world, but Virginia's strong serve and clever tactics have given her several important victories over Chris. And the flamboyant Ely Nastasi will meet the very quiet Sandy Mayer. They've played twice, they've split, and so the pressure's on. Look for uh, Ely Nastasi to throw some real wild antics into the foray here tonight if he gets behind. And that'll all be designed to rattle the quiet Sandy Mayer. You'll be seeing these and other stars in tonight's World Team Tennis Match. From the Oakland Coliseum, it's the Los Angeles Strings against the Golden Gators. Hello and welcome again to World Team Tennis on Home Box Office. I'm Julie Heldman and with me is our expert, Vic Braden. And Vic, these two teams are rivals. What do we have to look forward to? Well, in addition to some unbelievable singles matches you're going to see, we've got the greatest doubles player in the world, Frew McMillan. I think it's going to boil down to doubles and with Frew being the best, I think Golden Gate is going to have to be the uh, favorite tonight. You pick Golden Gate, I pick Los Angeles. Talking about position in the league, in the East Coast, Boston is ahead by so far nobody can catch him. Nine games out. They even beat San Diego this week, even without Martina Navratilova. And Vic, San Diego doing pretty well in the West. Right. They're up front by four, and that's all because Rod Laver says his team is so much fun to work with. He's got fine players, but they have the spirit of a championship team. And so that means Golden Gators in L.A., in his mind, are going to come in second and third regardless. As you probably know, the tennis tonight is on videotape. That's so we can show you the very best of world team tennis here on Home Box Office. The first set of the night was the women's doubles, which is traditionally the Gators' weak point. And Chris Everett and Ann Kiyomura proved that it was clobbering Virginia Wade and Alana Kloss 6-1. So that at the end of the first set, Everett and Kiyomura led the LA Strings to a 6-1 lead. This is the set that 10,000 fans have come to see tonight. Chris Everett against Virginia Wade. Virginia, the 1977 Wimbledon champion. Chris Everett, up until recently, the number one player in the world for three years. Chris is going to serve first. She's in the far court right now. Virginia Wade and her wow, partner, Ilana Kloss, just went down to a big defeat in the doubles. Do you think that'll make any difference to her out here? And they went down the same way, getting the volley, the setup, and the same way Virginia Wade just hit the volley into the net. I don't understand it. It's almost like there's a jinx, the, the triangle, the big uh, triangle out in the ocean. What is that triangle the Bermuda. called? That Bermuda Triangle. In one spot there, you can't volley. the flu for a couple of days. She's still got swollen glands, but she's hitting the ball pretty deep for a sick one. Darn right. The question is how long can she hang in there? But Virginia mm -hmm. Wade looks solid to me. But then all of a sudden, beautiful, beautiful, beautiful tennis, and then bingo, crummy. Mm-hmm. Here comes Chris. She didn't make a move for it, Vic. Why? All right, you get a chance to watch. He comes in for the net. Virginia hits the garbage play. It goes by as Chrissy Everett salutes it. You think she just guessed wrong? <laughs> she didn't even guess. <laughs> right. She, uh, she made a non-move. Uh, the biggest movement she made on that volley was with her neck. <laughs> Meeting wow. Virginia from the back of the court. I've seen Virginia try much more change-up stuff from the back court of the court against Chris in the past. 
You know, my mis I think the mistake they make is to try to hit the ball low against Chrissy. Second one like that. First game. And about five and doubles. Virginia Wade making just a few too many mistakes. You can't beat Chris Everett with mistakes like that. And when you get the ball that high, you're right. You've got to cut down the airs against Chrissy Everett, and that was the story in that game. You're serving for the Golden Gators, Virginia Wade. Virginia Wade serving in the second game of this set. She relies on her big serve a lot. Wonderful, powerful action. Twists her whole body, gets her legs into it. Ferocious look on her face, that helps. Good depth. Virginia stretching all the time. <laughs> Jeez. <laughs> Ely's saying, geez, I thought Chrissy was sick while I was in Alaska. <laughs> She's obviously been faking. She's playing like a pro. Ely was in Alaska for the last couple of days since his team played against Seattle. Chris missing by an inch. One. She looks oh. awfully eager out there. Used to be, Chris didn't get up for matches against against Virginia. She said, against Virginia, strangely enough, I just don't think I'm going to lose, and yet she would then lose. Ball died, Virginia miscued. I think another thing that might be helpful to Chris here is this is known as the slowest court in team tennis, and Chris likes a slow court. I'll tell you, you see that, ever see that commercial where they talk about the, your perfume or cologne arrives in the room before you do? <laughs> right. Or Virginia's yeah. grunt arrives before her serve, you see? <laughs> Is that good? I would think so. She, she gets at least 10 more miles per hour on her grunt than she does on the serve. <laughs> Oh, Chris was waiting for that one. Virginia Wade trying her new forehand slice. Thing. One, three. Well, she's got to go a little deeper than that mm -hmm. because it, you can't let Chrissy get placed. And she's in position. She can hit that backhand cross-court passing shot all day long. She's got to be deeper if she's going to float it. Break point. One, three down. Oh, great return. Oh, great volley. That forehand volley, that used to be Virginia Wade's weakness. Well, watch this. Great service return. Tremendous stretch. Look how low Virginia Wade got down, and she deserved the point. Put a lot of spin on that. Coach Nastasi just ran out, Three, gave Chris four. Everett the towel so she could wipe her hand off. Three all right now. It's a smart play by Nasty. Maybe you can give her a little bit of lift. But here's the difference between the big winner and the big money matches. How do you serve at three all? How do you return at three all? Everett has to call a cab. One game all. Exciting tennis here. Chris Everett serving from the far court. To an eager look at Virginia Wade. Back and forth on her feet. She is eager. Wow. Nailing that thing. And it was called long there. But we should say, Julie, that she hit the ball well. The approach is well hit. Zero, one. Mike Orlick down there called it long. There was, seems to be no dispute from the Gators bench. They're sitting on the opposite side. Oh. 
Norman Brooks almost got a little bump in the ear with that return. Norman Brooks, the referee. Double fault from Chris. Double fault. One each. Norman One Brooks, a fine ball. tennis player himself. Fine tennis player. He's done so much for tennis in the Bay Area. He's been one super fan. Two, one. Virginia doing what she can to fire herself up. Tends but, to hit that forehand off her back foot. Right, but to make a service return error like that at one all, is not, it really, in my opinion, is uncalled for because you can't make those kind of errors against Chrissy. In the position she likes least, having to stretch for the volley. You're right. If I were playing against Chrissy, I would try to get 100 out of 100 service returns in and then scramble, but not try to overplay the service return. Because when you start making errors against Chrissy, that's all over because she just relies simply upon your errors. You've got to make her play. And that error? I think she is over-eager, don't you? Yeah. She, she rushed too much. She was so eager to get in there that she had already played the point. Unfortunately, the ball had not arrived yet. <laughs> Virginia Wade waiting for serve with her hand on top of the racket. She uses a continental grip for both ground strokes. about eager. <laughs> what I like about that though, Julie, Ray is the forward ball. motion. Boy, Chrissy raised the ball. The average player would just wait for that ball to drop and then hit it. She kept going, increased her angle about 75, 80 degrees by that forward movement. Three all game. She wins it by attacking, going to the net on deep, crisp approach shots. While we have a moment, let's see the interview that I did before the match with Chris Everett. Chris Everett, we're used to seeing you winning every title, and this time at Wimbledon, you didn't win. You lost in the finals. What does that do to you? Does that make you feel less of a person, or how do you <laughs> feel about it? If it made me feel like less of a person, I'd be in big trouble, I think. Um, I think, you know, I have my priorities straight. Um, I think winning Wimbledon was important to me, as it is every year. Um, I think I've won 10 or 11 major titles now, and Martina, this is her first title that she won. Therefore, she wanted it more. Uh, there's a little bit more desire there, and I think she needed it more. Were you sad losing that? I mean, you were incredibly dignified and incredibly sweet in the finals to your friend, but did that, was that a, a, a tough thing for you? I was very surprised by my reaction. You know, last year I lost the semifinals to Virginia and I was crushed. You know, it was a very emotional loss to me. This year um, I really didn't feel that badly at all. I was a little bit disappointed right after because I had a lead in the third set. I had 4-2 and I thought maybe that it was within my reach to win Wimbledon. But um, I think I bounced right back, and I'm, I'm really happy, and I, I seem to be at peace, and, and I've accepted the fact that I didn't win Wimbledon, and I also know that there are going to be a lot more Wimbledons for me. Chris, since the beginning of the computer rankings, you've been number one, and now you're number two. How important is being number one? It's still important to me. Um, a few things have changed, though, since I took that four-month break. I don't know what it is, but the in intensity isn't there like it used to be. I'm still working just as hard and I'm still, maybe I'm enjoying it a little bit more. But, uh, you know, maybe it's time for me to take a back seat for a few months just to feel how, how I'm going to feel being number two. And maybe if I dislike it intensely enough, I'll bounce right back to being number one. I bet you're not going to like it. I bet <laughs> you're going to bounce back. Chris Everett, a super champion. Wade. 
serving. 2-1 up in, the, in her single set against Chris Everett. One, zero. She's got over 10,000 fans behind her, and that helps. I think Virginia feels she has something to make up to, losing to Chris here the last time, 6-2. I think that was a little bit of Virginia's tactics Two, I was talking about. Zero. The first one was floated and deep. The second one was low and sliced. And the ball rolled. But you're right. I think she's been waiting for this match for a long time. You can tell that she's made up her mind to go flat out on everything. Ooh. And that's why she needs to go flat out. <laughs> How do you like to not have finished your follow through on the serve when you look around and that little pill's going by you? Those are two very fine shots. Drew McMillan, coach of the Gators, doesn't show too much emotion a lot of the time. Cute little smile. You kidding? That's one of the biggest smiles I've ever seen. <laughs> <You're right. laughs> that picture was showing us that he does not sleep, eat, and live in his cap. He just puts it on to play tennis. Net. Second serve. Three points to one. Virginia serving. Chris standing behind the baseline. We've seen Chris come to the net four, five times so far this season. I know, set. this is the new uh, Chrissy Everett. And, and she's going to be absolutely lethal when she starts getting the confidence at the net. Net. But she's always said she doesn't like to uh, show her sweat or fling herself about too much. I asked her last year, why it was she doesn't fling herself about so much. That, by the way, was Chuck Camuso, the scorer. And she said, well, if I absolutely had to throw myself around, I would. But I don't have to. I'm number one playing the way I do. That was good. It was definitely good. Brings three all. You can hear the gallery doesn't agree. Well, See? this is a disputed call, but I'll tell you, Chrissy knew where it was going. Look at that. She threaded that needle right down there. Take your pick. Three points all. Third one so far in the set. Sure did, Julie, but Virginia Wade was late getting in. Watch this. Virginia really pumping that ball. There she goes out of court. But look where Virginia was. After the deep shot, deciding to come in, she was caught in no man's land. No, woman's land. <laughs> Chris Everett, oh. serving from the side. I want to get into that no woman's land. No woman's land. <laughs> My name is Julie Heldperson. <laughs> This looks like she's serving pretty well, Vic. Deep. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> but she knew it when it went off her strings. I think she pulled her knees up. 
She did, but her racket head was tilted under too, Julie. You know, I watched her when she was practicing, and when she was trying to get more topspin, the face was down a little bit more. She opened that and got caught. She was working on it in one of those hard uh, sessions about an hour before she went to play. She plays two on one a lot in practice. She moved around that one well. I thought it was a tough lob over her left side, and yet she backed around it. Only well, it shows you that Chrissy anticipated pretty well, though. I didn't think she'd get her hands on that shot at all. Well, Chris is not the fastest woman in the world, but she's probably number one in anticipation. Give him a little cheer. Come on, come on. Nervous and vociferous on the bench, Elena Stasi is. Wants his team to win? Yeah, are you kidding? He wants a big lead, man. He wants to be able to come in and horse around. True. <laughs> he's behind. He's got to get out there and gut it. And he's been in Alaska. It might take him two sets to thaw out. <laughs> This is the fourth one of this set. Virginia has won two of them. Chris has won one of them. The last time they played here, they had a lot of three all games, and Chris won them all. That's why the score was 6 2. she said she had lost during Wimbledon. It's not this one, it's the next one. Maybe Virginia could have put this one away, but when Here Chris just okay. flips those wrists, she didn't do it during Wimbledon, but she's got it back. Okay. Virginia Wade, serving at 2-3 down, oh. having played four, three all points so far this set. Well, that was a great approach job by Virginia Wade, so deep. And normally you're entitled to that point. When you get a ball in that deep on the approach shot, it's so difficult to pass you. Uh, I just can't believe it. I've seen some very good tennis. Mm. Very normally good. you can take a snooze after that kind of a good approach. That's right. Well, no, you can't sleep in this set. this. Virginia Wade anticipating so well gets there, still loses the point. The only way you're going to beat Chrissy Everett after that is to get her somewhere in a dark alley and hit her with a bottle. Virginia overran it, don't you think, Vic? Oh, she she anticipated it. too well. Great anticipation. Though. Sorry. That's the second sorry of the night. I keep score of Virginia's sorries. Significant, and it shows how good or bad her toss is on a particular evening. And 
And that voice you heard there was Eli Nastasi. Boy, he is. There he is. The first point. You can see very specific instructions from uh, Coach Nastasi. <laughs> Zero three. First point. Uh, I don't know what he means by that. What the do you first mean? break point, I guess, because he's got a whole slew of them. Yeah. A bag full. <laughs> He's saying, let's get this one. Right. <laughs> right. Don't wait for the other four or three chances after this one. Oh! Fantastic four hit from Chris Ever. So she breaks Virginia's serve for zip. Vic, we got some great tennis tonight, but on Saturday, July 29th, we're going to see some wonderful swimming and some really fine announcers. Marty Glickman, John Neighbor, Mickey King Hogue. That's not bad. It's all taking place at Mission Viejo Invitational Swimming. Those are the top U.S. swimmers and divers, and they're competing in the last meet before the Nationals. And that means gold medalist Brian Goodell and the world 400-meter record holder Alice Brown. Fantastic swimming from Mission Viejo on Saturday, July the 29th. And the two gladiatresses have come out for battle. Well, Chris have. Everett. And uh, Eli Nastasi is complaining that when uh, Virginia throws up the ball and, uh, and doesn't serve, he's claiming it's a balk. Just like in baseball, oh, no. should be called a serve. But the rule states that the racket head must make an effort at the ball, or the player must make an effort, or it's not a serve. from Virginia. As a matter of fact, the rule also states, doesn't it, Vic Edwards, that if you throw it up, take a swing and miss, that's a fault. <laughs> that is true. You can miss it by 50 feet. It's true, so long as you make an effort. I'll tell you how you've returned to the tour, Julie. You call me Vic Edwards. Oh, jeez. <laughs> I'll try George Brown. From well, you see, Sorry, the Victor. difference between you and me is I couldn't even win my local city tournament. I lost to everybody. And you were around the world so often, you know 50,000 Vicks. You're the cutest of them. At least the heaviest. Chris Everett making a second effort. Fine drop shot from Virginia Wade. She's up 2-0 in this game. Two. Is that what Virginia Wade's going to have to do, Vic Braden? Well, she ran her so well, but she's playing well. What's really tragic, I think, is that she's playing better than I've seen her play all year right now, and she's still behind. speed and spin from Chris there. That's right, but wow. very deep shots. And Virginia made the tr tragic mistake of letting the ball play here, but watch Chrissy keep that chin up and throw those shoulders into that ball. She's hidden very well. She gives a grunt too, Vic. points all. A little over hitting from that baseline. You're not going to do much against Chrissy Everett. I think to try to set two feet behind your baseline and push her around is too tough. You got to wait for the opportunity. And Virginia has two break points. Something she wants. Yes, you see uh, what Chris thought of her forehand. Look like my forehand there, bent elbow style. Well, look at her dig in. Huh? Yep. Chrissy's been this way uh, many times in her life, down break point. Cuts the pace down. Oh, Short lob. <laughs> That's right. You can't throw that short a lot. When you go to Chrissy's house, you got a lot of silverware at her house. <laughs> Fifth three-all point of the set. Each one is one, two.
Too big. Yes, it was. It was out. And going better. You can see how elated Prue McMillan is. Ah, finally a smile. That's the Gators bench. And Virginia Wade has won. Is now leads three, three all points to two. But is she still behind in the set? Four games to three. Virginia needs to win her serve to break even. Boy, the crowd's behind her. Son of a gun. Nice crowd. It's really great to hear them cheer. I never had that for me. <laughs> Didn't have 11,000 fans out there egging you on for each forehand in the thrilling atmosphere? No? Never. Not even in Pismo Beach? That is for sure. Knowledgeable team tennis crowd here in Oakland. They get behind their fans. Matter of fact, there's a guy sitting over near us here. Got so worried when Virginia and Ilana were losing the doubles, he really got upset. <laughs> Third sorry of the night. What Nastasi likes to call a bulk. Talking about the crowd here tonight. Week ago, huge crowd. Well, it, absolutely to capacity. It was so big that it was bigger than the crowd of the Oakland uh, baseball team just That's next right. door. They outdrew the athletics by 7,000 people. snake play. Watch now, she just takes that thing, uncoils and goes. She's up 2-0, serving to get even again. She felt she got a bad call. You're going to get a chance to take a look yourself. How do you see it? I saw it wide. How would you see it? <laughs> with, the, with which eye? Hopefully both. Fine smash. Good lob. She ran a country mile, but I'll tell you, with this crowd, she comes back and wins this set. Look out, Moscone. You're going to have some trouble in San Francisco if you run again. She's up 2-1 on her serve. Must seem like forever since it was 2-0. You're going to see some cutesy stuff. Short balls, they double back against each other. Virginia goes, tries twice. But I'll tell you, when you try twice against Chrissy, the second one better be a good one, or you're going to feel a breeze. And you see that Chris is getting an extra breath, but she's not as tired out as Virginia. Virginia's walking around in circles. She's got a, wonder if she's getting the stomach flu. It's going around here in San Francisco area. We're here at the Oakland Coliseum. Two points all. Look at the play! I can't believe it. Look at the second effort. I thought she was out of petrol, but she's not. Tremendous play. Serving now at 3-2. 
Oh, she's she, putting everything into every shot. She wants that first serve so badly, and what a time to have to go for the second. She's still exhausted from the effort she had to put into it, but didn't she just do well there? Yeah, I tell you, she's killing the peanut vendors. <laughs> no one's buying a thing. Chris Everett, does she have something extra to put in here? Vic Braden, you talked about the snake of a forehand that Virginia's hitting, she lifts her right leg and twists her whole body around. That was a tough call, and Ely is off the bench. He can see anywhere. <laughs> comes back One into the county, ball. gets the ball. Unfortunately, she takes gas. Can you believe it that one had to lose that point? She not only took gas, but she is, she's got to be out of gas. Oh, I can't believe it. I've seen some real tennis. We're going to try and get an interview with the winner, but I think that's going to have to be done on a cot. <laughs> Two points all. Imagine if this were a three-set match. It's not. It's one set. It's team tennis. The moment the strings are ahead, 10 to 5. But this, everything's up here in this one single set. Pride for these two women. Chris Everett's bench telling her, come to net, come to net. That's most of what Elena Stasi says to her. Get into the net. And I think he's being effective. She's up 3-2 in this game. Net. Up. Look of ferocity there. And we're going into our sixth three all point <laughs> of the set. Well, I'll tell you, it's tennis change. You couldn't hear your mother calling out to you in this crowd. the three all and plays it. She bombs that ball. There's no choking about that. That was a smart play. Virginia keeping it in play, waiting for the opening. There comes the cross court. Now that usually signals that Virginia's going to start running a country mile. 
Keep it in play, a little short ball. Good sharp angle by Virginia. That throws Chrissy out of court. Virginia jumps into the lead, 5-4. 15 seconds, 15 seconds. I think Virginia's saying right there, I don't want to talk. <laughs> she just wants to breathe. Oxygen somebody. I think she's looking for a legal drug. <laughs> Virginia Wade serving for the set. Virginia Wade really has to be in magnificent condition. I really thought she was going to collapse there two games ago. <laughs> and look at Chrissy. She just looks like God. I got to hurry. The library closes at 10. <laughs> The library. Oh. And Chris says, okay, Virginia, you may be serving to the set, but you aren't going to win it running away. Zero two. Remember, this is the lady we're looking at now who's supposed to have had the flu the last couple of days and still have swollen glands, but she isn't playing as if she has the flu. Great return. Certainly the finest tennis these two have played against each other. Boy, I tell you, I'm going to stand up and cheer. Super set. One point to two. Blowing it up. Oh. What's the call? At what two points all. Wait a minute now. Nora Cooks says play a let. <laughs> Referee. Norm Overruled. Linesman. Mike Orlick. Called for a let. Virginia showing the spot on the court where she thought it bounced. And Nastasi kicking it away. <laughs> and Nastasi's booed. <laughs> Might as well. They're booing everybody else. Point to two still. Emotional crowd. Fine serve. Oh, took some of the steam out of Virginia that time. I think so. She took her eye off that ball. She hit the wood. The ball rolled right down her thigh. Chris does not like the booing. She yeah, but, but excuse me, Julie, give credit to Norman Brooks because that's his role, and he's standing, he was the closest player to it or the close, closest lines person to it, and boy, he said, hey, look, and he came out with no hesitation, and win, lose, or draw, whether he's right or wrong, he made a quick decision on it, and that's what a good player likes. I think that was a finger signal. Two points to three, still down break point. I didn't know they knew that signal in England. Short.
Virginia Way. Virginia Wade, you handled Chrissy Everett and you did it so well, you came out there fighting like crazy. I've never seen you so charged up. What got into you? Well, I, I really was charged up because I played her 10 days ago and I lost her 6-2 and I had felt very listless and um, I thought, my goodness, you know, I can't do that at another time and there's an enormous crowd here and I really do want to win. So I'm going to, I suddenly, after the first two games, I thought, I've got to go. Well, Virginia, I saw that look on your face when you got that call and you had to go back and replay the point and I think it got to you a little bit, did it? Well, it, it did because I thought he, he wasn't right to do what he did because it was such a close called and I thought it was out and so it's silly to try and overrule a ball that can't he couldn't be very sure of himself but you know I was so determined that I was going to win that whatever happened I wasn't going to let it affect me but except that I played the next point and I lost it so I was one three down which was a little different from two all. Well, Virginia I've seen you play so many big matches you've won Wimbledon you've been everywhere and yet somehow or another you got yourself psyched up for this match what were you thinking about before this match? It's one of the things that I find that if I don't get psyched up I I mean, if I go on court without my mind fully out there, I'm a, a really a mediocre player. And if I go out with my mind fully on it, I am really can be a pretty good player. And it's just, but that's the hardest thing of all for me. It's one of those things that I know that I just can't go out and play the average match every day and play as well as I'd like to. That's Virginia Wade. That's why she won Wimbledon. The third set of the night was in mixed doubles between Fru McMillan and Maurice Kruger of the Gators against Anne Kiyomura and Nast Ily Nastasi, who delighted in aiming his looping topspin shots right at Maurice Kruger. Let's join the set in progress with Kruger serving at 3-all and Los Angeles ahead 13-10 in the match. Maurice Kruger. Putting as much as she got into her serve. He's funny, you know. She's not the most talented of players. Maurice Kruger isn't. But she, she gets the maximum out of what she's got. Her placement on the court is fabulous. And now she's in trouble on her serve. Nastasi really teed off on that serve. Net. Oh, well, we've got a barn burner. <laughs> no one's leaving, that's for darn uh -uh. sure. Oh, son of a gun. First double fault of the night. That's pretty amazing for three really hotly contested sets. Ely can't win the service return wow. against the woman. He's going crazy. So this is the first time I've ever been handled by a skirt. Not the first time. I'm not going to touch it. <laughs> and Maurice Kruger's serve broken. And that gives the LA Strings a 14 to 10 lead and a service break in this set. Teeny Annie Kiyomura serving. It should be the Gators' chance to break the strings serves. 
Oh, a great move from Nastasi. He went from one side all the way to the other. That's about a 22-foot move. Wow. And I see <laughs> Stephanie Tollison and Chrissy say, I don't believe it. But that was unbelievable because Maurice had such a fine service return. And what was even more unbelievable is Nastasi doesn't punch follies anymore. He has that to take this crisp. round roundhouse swing at them. You're right, Julie. And Nastasi moving so far, he got through to hit the net. I think that really put Fru off a bit. You're right. The ball was hit at Fru, and he couldn't get around it either. He couldn't get around to make that play, and he was watching Nasty take off. Wow! Oh! Just missed. Little Annie. She may not have the most powerful serve, but actually she's serving it nice and deep. And she did she get down low for that volley? That was mm -hmm. beautiful. Doesn't have far to bend. <laughs> That's what you think, man. I'm short. It's the same old way. When I bend, it's hard to get back up. Is that biomechanically speaking? <laughs> no. It's also because I love those locale donuts. <laughs> Now, there was Nastasi's problem with the strings. His strings are giving him no help there. He tried to flick it off, but he has to hit it. That's right. And plus, the ball is so close to the tape that he needed really fine tuning on that racket, which he does not have. That thing is strung at about 0.3 pounds per square inch. So I exaggerate a little. What is it strung at? Do you know the tension? Tension is about just about nothing, Julie. You're absolutely right. And that nothing got him a good soft volley there, and that won the game for him. Drew McMillan serving to save his team from defeat in this set. Oh! And also to stop his team going down by being down by 10 games. Net. He's serving at 10 15, 3 5. They wouldn't have a clue where that ball is going. But Fru knew exactly. Double hander helped there. Good recovery from Kiyomura. And Kiyomura, Wimbledon champion, 1975, with Kazuko Sawamatsu. Oh! Kazuko is actually Japanese. Annie? Comes from San Mateo, born here. Doesn't speak a word of Japanese. Another example of the kind of trouble that Nastasi can get into. There's Sandy Mayer, who's going to be playing against Nastasi next. Yeah, but he's going to be doing it without any fingernails. <laughs> right. Yep. Boy, Fru would have loved to have had that one, did Sure would have. Nastasi didn't think it was good, actually. Called good. Called let. And now the second serve. Net. And a double fault. Two more. Ah, Nasty's starting to needle a little bit now. Fru turns his back. Stasi looks like he did not lose weight. <laughs> oh, he's going to try that one. Oh, he's going to show us which one now. <laughs> and it's set point. For the Los Angeles Strings. 
Drew McMillan needing a good first serve. He didn't get it. Will Nastasi try and move around, hit a forehand pick? He's going to try and give it the bolo whip, I'll tell you that. That ball is going to come five different directions. McMillan serving to Nastasi. 13th three all game. And McMillan has been unable to get a first serve in against Nastasi. Now watch Nasty try to get around and hit a forehand. And he may go right at Maurice Kruger. Yeah, I think so. <laughs> I'll tell you. <laughs> Here he is. Now watch this. He's got blood in his eyes. He's saying, take it. You're about to get the fuss sandwich. And she said, look, kid, you have nothing. While we have a moment, let's see the interview that Vic Braden did before the match with Fru McMillan. Fru McMillan has been called the best doubles player in the world. Some call him the best tennis coach in the world. Fru McMillan, what makes a good coach in world team tennis? Well, I think it's uh, somebody basically who has um, a good idea of the tactics of the game, you know, as they're applied in men's, women's singles and in the doubles events. Obviously, there's not too much. You can tell many of the Wimbledon champions as to their basic uh, shot making. But I think there's a lot that a lot of people can learn, including myself, when it comes to tactics. Very often I'm in the, out in the court there and I really appreciate help from the bench as they give it to me. Well, Fru, I saw you go over and talk to uh, Virginia Wade. You were practicing, not saying much, just pounding the balls 100 miles an hour at the women, and suddenly you stopped, went over and talked to Virginia Wade. What did you tell her? Well, uh, I thought that she was uh, a little bit wristy in her, in her forehand, and uh, so I told her, obviously, to use a little bit less wrist. Also, that she wasn't... Uh, which all of this, of course, is contradicting what I said earlier about basic shot making, uh, that she wasn't turning her shoulder fully round on the back end and therefore playing the ball a little bit late, both of which uh, she applied in the next round of shots, and it seemed to help quite a bit. <laughs> Fru, I saw you playing one-handed a little bit earlier, and I've never seen you do that before, although people told me that you could play very well one-handed. Do you play one hand ever, or have you ever played with one hand, and when did you start with the two hands? Well, I started initially with two hands, which is why I hold the racket, uh, that the racket was too heavy. Uh, there was a time uh, when two-handed tennis wasn't accepted, and people said, well, look, if you want to play well and do well, you've got to play with one-handed. And I tried that for a while, for about three weeks just after I left school, but it didn't seem like me. And uh, now I played for fun. I, when I play uh, two-handed tennis, I don't enjoy it all that much. When I, when I want to go out and enjoy myself, I play with one hand. It's a hell of a lot easier. Those are the tips from Fru McMillan, best tennis coach in the world, best doubles player in the world, and it didn't cost you a cent. Ily Nastasi. Oh. Put a lot into it on this service game. Oh. People like to love Annie Kiyomura a lot for two reasons. One, she's short, and two, her overhead is the weakest of her volley strokes. <laughs> They're needling nasty. Boy, that was a big point, Julie. Maurice changed her mind in the middle of hitting that. That's she couldn't right. figure out whether she was going to hit it or lob it, and she finally did tried both. Because it was a fine service return. Sure was. And they had the offensive going. And she's done it twice. And that one was a perfect lob. Good hitting. Nasty one, blocks back two. a volley. And up comes the fake out. Over the head. Jeez, that's a sad look. Nastasi did well to keep the ball away from McMillan. 
<laughs> Massey goes up and gives Annie a little tip. If it's close to both of us, I'll take it. Is it really? It's not called being a pig. That's called playing smart mixed doubles yeah. here right now. <laughs> Woo! Big spinning first serve from Nastasi. And who else is going to lose fingernails tonight? Huh. Look at To lead his team to a 16 to 11 lead over the Gators. Ely Nastasi, you were having a little trouble winning the close ones. You still came out to win the match, but what was happening when you're on the lead? Well, we have a couple of games, 1-3 or 3-2. You know, sometimes I miss the return, but sometimes I make a good return. I mean, a great shot to the girl, and she just played unbelievable volleys. And the, Important point. I didn't expect her to play that point like that, the way she was playing. And it's unlucky, you know, we lost all these games. We don't win you know, any one of this. Well, Ely, you once told me that if the woman can't stand the heat, she should get out of there because you're trying to give her the fuzz sandwich. Yeah. Is that what you were trying to do out there? No, really, you know, I, I don't want to play all my shots to McMillan because he's the best double player in the world or ever. And I, I try to hit, you know, most of my shots to the girl because she's the weak one. and. Uh, that's the way to play mixed doubles. You know, I play a couple of mixed doubles with more. That's the way I want it. And uh, I think everybody's playing more to the girl. Well, the crowd's excited. Ely's excited. We got some great tennis coming up. What a fantastic match here in Oakland. The fourth set of the night was the men's singles between Ily Nastasi and an injured Sandy Mayer. Mayer was not running very quickly, and Nastasi really took advantage as he led 4-1. We join the match with Mayor serving and Los Angeles ahead 20 to 12. Sandy Mayer down 4 1. And he is being hustled and bustled and served at by Nastasi. They love it when, when the nasty's in trouble. Actually, Vic Braden, the last time the Gators played L.A. in L.A., Virginia Wade just razzed Nastasi from the side. She said things I gathered that were totally unprintable. Well, Almost yeah. unthinkable. <laughs> Not yeah. quite. Well, it may be her last visit to the Queen. She didn't say him to the queen. She said him to Nostasi. <laughs> there you could hear Virginia talking out to him. Almost a winner. Good get from a lame mayor. And Nastasi pointing left and smashing right. Doesn't have to hit where he points, does he? Well, he's upset because from the bench, they're raising, razzing him in the middle of the overhead. They started yelling out. He started making, look at that! Oh, oh you got to believe that! Oh! Illy Nastasi asking the crowd to cheer him. Oh, I'll Three cheer for two. that one. Three, two, if he comes back, but the odds are still against him. Oh, yeah, little gamesmanship from Mayer, too. <laughs> Sandy says, what's going on? All the arm waving. If it's intentional to distract them, then it's illegal. <laughs> Sandy Mayer wins his serve, but the strings, that means Nastasi, still leads 4-2. And Vic Braden, starting Saturday, July the 29th, my favorites, the Beatles. I went through the whole 60s, adoring all four of them. I tell you, they're so strong. Can you believe they can hang on this long? So if you can, can't believe it, then, or if you do believe it, you gotta meet John, George, Paul, and Ringo in an intimate look at the phenomenon that was the Beatles. It's Let It Be, and I still think they're wonderful. The Beatles, starting Saturday, July 29th. Leading 4-2, here's Julian 
Ilya Nastasi serving. His team has a seven game lead. He's hoping for eight and they need every single game of it because going into the last set, it's going to be Mayer and McMillan against Amritraj and Amritraj. Mayer looking a little more lively on his toes there. Ely Nastasi, who's oh, has to block wow. his volley with that racket. He can be offensive. He throws a nice little cute shot, but that's even cuter. Sandy Mayer moving a little bit now. It wasn't in the beginning. Yeah. And Ely Nastasi, who used to be the fastest man in tennis when he was about three, four years younger, nearly ran that impossible oh, no. shot down. Right, we should remind our viewers there's only one service break here. If Ely loses this, Sandy holds his serve. It's all tied up. Great serve from Nastasi. He is fifth ace of the set. One, two. Mayor's approach shot and cutting off the cross court backhand by Nastasi has been very effective. Good wide serve from Nastasi. Well, the facts are if the ball gets into play and, uh, and they're even, Sandy Mayer is probably the favorite. Nastasi's if he can get to the net. Right, Sandy's got to end it, or Ely's got to end it pretty quickly against Sandy. Yep, not in the beginning of this set, because Sandy was looking slow there. There he comes. Uh oh. Three points all. He's gonna take it in the left court. This is unbelievable. The Gators have seven three all point games that they've won. The Strings have six, and yet the Strings are ahead by seven games. Oh. Ely's mad because the, the vendor, the beer vendor, walked right in his way just as he went to serve. Uh oh, he's in trouble now. And that was he good. Nastasi winning both three all games in this set. Vic Braden, I miscounted before. It is now eight. Oh, thank you, Mr. Nastasi. Uh -oh. Sometimes says a few things to get himself fired up. And I think that might have been one. Mitch Oprea sitting on the side of the court. He's the one who's constantly having to get Nastasi out of trouble. Nastasi pulling his own self out of trouble. Who was he yelling to now? He was mad because he thought Sandy Mayer was quick serving him. He wasn't ready for the serve. Mayer does not look like he's serving and coming in. Maybe he's hurt his ankle a little bit from that extra try. I'm not sure about that. Actually, his foot, not his ankle. Mayer not in quick enough. What I was going to say, actually, in the beginning of this is, believe it or not, the Golden Gators have won eight th three all points to the LA's strings is seven, and yet they're losing by a, a huge margin. Ace by Mayer. I think the three all points is what makes it the difference. That's right. And here it isn't. Oh! Maybe he, if the Gators had won all those three all points, they'd be losing by an even bigger margin. Three. Keep an eye on him. He really throws that shoulder into the ball. Pow! He gets the ball shoulder height, and when he gets that one, he is a winner. He has 3-2 on his serve. Powered that one. Oh! And it was a little both Three wide and in. long. Sandy Mayer sticking in there. He's down 
Ilya Nastasi has to win his serve right here or else trouble. Ilya Nastasi getting a little bit riled by everything going on now. Mostly trying to give his team an enormous lead going into the men's doubles. Ooh, almost made it. Big first serve. One zip. And zip is what his serve is doing. Sandy Mayers, one of his assets is his speed. He's not very fast out here tonight, though, because he's just coming back from an injury. But he sure is trying to be gutsy. Oh. Broke a string, I think. He uh, has broken as many as three or four a night in team tennis in one set. Those strings he's playing with are made of nylon, not of gut, because he doesn't want to break them so much. He only gets one serve, though. You jump into play, it matters not that you broke a string. He's got to take this foreign racket now and throw in a big second serve. Backhand. He has, uh, Nastasi has won very few backhand passing shots in the whole match. One, two. Net out. Nastasi's got to serve his way out of this battle. Mayer's going to try and get into the net. Look, he's already in front of the baseline. Trying to get in, a little short. Oh, new racket. Does that make a difference? I'd say Nasty's in a little trouble um, right now. If he, especially if he does not get the first serve in. Even though he's should at least tie the score with the, with the percentages. Oh, yes, great play by Mayer. He's got it, Mayer's got it, Nasty's got it, and Mayer! And the whole game changes up and so is the crowd. Sandy Mayer injured, still breaks, Ily Nastasi serve. And Vic, as Vic Braden would say, this is a real barn burner. This is really heated up here. Sandy Mayer looking down and out in the beginning of this set, now serving to stay even. And he's charged up. He's faster on his feet than he was in the beginning. He started out looking at a, like an old lame horse. Tremendous serve, tremendous service return, and almost an unbelievable shot by Sandy. Low volley, well placed but he's got to get that first serve in because Ely can top spin that service return at his feet. He'll have to come up with a big volley then. One more. Matter of an inch. Well, even born again Christians can't get them all. <laughs> and that is Sandy Mayer. Sandy Mayer has been known to say, when I'm on the court, God is on my side. Right, he is. And it's really tough, I would think, because you know, he's very conservative in what he says and then to listen to what Nasty says. Oh. Two different styles. Nastasi respecting no one. Oh. Long volley. No. Oh. Punching it, Vic Braden. Yeah, but boy, you have to hand it to Sandy. He's still coming in, still attacking, still making the play. That is his game. Oh, tough return. The first good backhand passing shot. That's right, and but that's also a short play by on the volley by Sandy, which helps set it up. When Ely can step into the ball, he's much more effective. Set this is point. big. Set point for Anastasi. Well, a little few words, nasty saying the crowd's still going crazy. Give me a chance. Nastasi trying to concentrate. He wants this one for his team to give his team a seven game lead. This is big. Yeah. Not going to win that one. Three all points. Three, four. Boy, 
I talk about <laughs> excitement. This is big. Nasty hits himself on the hip. We're in action. Good return. And Nastasi with a great forehand, nipping, passing shot. Wins the set, 6-4. On the 16th, you count him up, 16th, three all point of the night. This has got to be a record. The final set of the evening, the men's doubles match the Amritraj brothers, Vijay and Ashok, who are ranked 10th in the league, against Fru McMillan and Sandy Mayer, who were the best team in the league. McMillan and Mayer had to win by a lot in order to have a chance to win in overtime, but they only had a 5-3 lead as we join Sandy Mayer serving for the set with Los Angeles still ahead, 25-20. Gators, up 5-3 in the set, down by five in the match. Sandy Mayer serving, wants to close it out now. Out. If Mayer and McMillan win this game, they will, we will go into overtime. Overtime, they would have to win all four games in a row and then we would have a super tiebreaker. Same two teams playing. And it could happen. It could. has happened in the world team tennis. I believe winning four in a row would be a record. LA was down seven, I think, against Anaheim and came back, if I'm not mistaken. Or five, maybe it was five. I thought it was. F I'll have to check that out for you, Julie. I was not at the match. My little pal Stevie Snell told me about the match. I was in Hawaii. He said, I thought he said down seven, maybe seven. Sandy Mayer's fourth ace of the night. And it's an ace for overtime. Well, with Sandy serving and through at the net, the odds are pretty great. who's going to serve in overtime. Ilana Kloss going out, patting Sandy Mayer, Fru McMillan talking with his other teammates and with Norm Brooks. Change sides, please, Change sides, because change sides every three games. It's the end, it's nine games here. Okay, strings lead by four and they're gonna change sides, Norm Brooks. Ask him to change sides. That means with uh, VJ Armitage serving. That's right. He's, they're going to have to break VJ's serve. And Vic Braden, talking about a barn burner. We're going into overtime tonight. Yes, Los Angeles has led, but with this crowd of over 11,000 tonight, there's still a chance for the Gators. Talking about a barn burner, the last time the Gators played, they were in a barn wetter. It was, it was rain, rain when they played in Phoenix and it held up the match for an hour and a half indoors. VJ Amritraj having to win his serve. Zero, one. Zero, one. What a tough play. He read the ball, right? Serve and ace. ace. Boy, those strings want to get into the locker room, but they can't go yet. BJ rejects the ball. He says, hey, throw me my favorite. Give me one that's got an ace written all over it. <laughs> got A on his strings. Oh! Oh! And a near ace, a fabulous sliding oh, serve my. from BJ Amritra. You see a big serve and a very good effort by Sandy Mayer, but not enough. It's out. Two points to one, VJ Amritraj serving. VJ again, it means victory. Now he's got to serve the second serve to the best doubles player probably in the history of the game. Whoa! You said
said that at just the right time, Vic Braden. Well, to make matters worse, VJ dropped that racket hit, and that's a little bit of a choke sign. But if VJ loses it, the pressure's really going to be on a shot because Sandy and Fru will both be favored to win theirs, and it could end up in a tie. Don't go away, folks. Two points all. He's got to get the first serve in, or he's going to be one nervous player. I'd be. You were never nervous, Julie. Don't give me that. Just because I ended up eating my racket. <laughs> Second serve. Oh! What luck! That's enough to make a person turn religious. Look at that. Boy, Sandy had some bad, bad breaks going for him in the singles. Hits the tape, makes the play, and unfortunately, he eats it right there. Good play, good hands by Sandy Mayer. Great point against Vijay Ashok, standing in what we call Australian position. And a tough because... And ace! <laughs> Vijay comes around with the pearlies. Look at that. Watch him smile. And we're going for a three-all point. Oh, and he's going to play it again, making Sandy Mayer change the return system. But they lost it the last time against Sandy. Oh! Second serve. Ashok's oh, going back to the left. Right, Julie. Pressure play. That's right, it is match point. Oh! oh! He's only there. Here's Roman Mellon. From McMillan, going to serve. Gotta hold his serve. The moment Mayor and McMillan lose a game, it's all over for the Gators. They've already been down one match point, but they have won 12 of 19 three all points tonight. Just remember, if Prue wins the serve, the whole match is going to depend on Ashuk winning his serve because then the momentum, if he does not win it, will be all Golden Gators and the pressure will be unbelievable. And this is why Ili Nastasi was fighting to win as quickly and as well as he could against Sandy Mayer. Sandy Mayer making a last minute stab, maybe he should have. And I, I think you're right because on a play like that, when you're pressing and Fru was right there, it returned well. You believe it, folks. We are a long way from being over. The shot is nervous. Three points to one on Fru's serve, and that's significant that Ashuk is nervous because he's got to serve next game. from something very special here tonight. It's true. Fruman. L.A. Strings has still have a two-game lead, but oh, what could happen? That's just one service break. And then it's all even. It would put us into a super tiebreaker. That's one. Oh, but those three more points. Oh, that's a long road. <laughs> he doesn't have a big serve. 21 years old, going on 80 after this match. Really? Two down. A shot. A glimmer of a smile. <laughs> VJ needling a little bit. That he just ladles it. Perfect. A shock serving again. Two points uh -oh. to one up. Uh -oh. Crowd cheering.
cheering when he misses his first serve, and Nastasi with his head in his hands. You can see the strings bench is not elated by this. Good eye! Oh, and Frew misses a big one. Three points to one. Triple match point coming up right here. Watch the shock. If he wins this, he'll turn around his big brother and say, <laughs> good thing you know how to choose a good partner. <laughs> He, he did him. it! He aced him! And an incredible night. A night full of that almost all the way down to the wire in the super tiebreaker. The Amritraj brothers win just enough as Ashok hold, Amritraj holds on to his serve. In overtime, the LA Strings beat the Golden Gators 26 to 23 in one wonderful night of world team tennis. Ashok Amitraj, I want to be want you to be honest with me now. When you saw your big brother dump his serve and now it's all on you for the match, what were you thinking? Jesus, uh, to tell you the truth, I wasn't thinking of too much. My mind was a complete blank. I mean, I knew I had to go out and uh, you know win four points. And having lost the last two service games, I figured it was really going to be a tough task with Sandy playing unbelievable. But uh, you know, it was kind of lucky going there. I served well. I don't think you're ever very lucky, but I noticed in the game that you lost, you were starting to get a little soft on the wrist on the service returns, and it looked like you were starting to get a little nervous, were you? Well, not really. Actually, Vijay and I had talked about it, and Sandy was blocking back all the fast serves really well. So I figured we'd try some slow ones, you know, kind of change it around a little bit, because, you know, that was the last game we had. So, and it kind of worked, you know, because the last serve especially, I sliced it away from him, and it was really soft, and the guy couldn't handle it, so that was good. An unbelievable match. When I entered the arena tonight, Ashok told me we're a dead pipe cinch, lead pipe cinch, <laughs> to win this match. And he turns around and says, it was really nothing, folks. That's Ashok Armitrage, the L.A. Strings, the winner, and a very exciting night. Throughout the night, Los Angeles led. And yet, in overtime, the Gators nearly caught up. And finally, Ashok Armitrage held on so that his team won. And Vic Brayton, what a night of tennis. I'm wasted from that night. <laughs> you know, how about me? I used to be 6'3 and thin. Are you kidding me? That was an unbelievable tennis, a very exciting night. I really enjoyed it. And the real story was LA got the point when they needed it. So close, but you just get that one little point when you need it, and that's the difference. And yet there were 19 three all points, and the Gators won 10 of them, the LA only nine. Why should that be? Well, 10 out of 19 is, it still showed how even the match was, but LA got the rest of the games that were the really important ones. And the difference, for me, the difference was the women's doubles in the first set to win 6-1. It was not a great set of, dif uh, of tennis, but that did sh tell the story in the long run. But you always say that about the women. <laughs> The final score in overtime was Los Angeles 26, the Gators 23. Be sure to join HBO next week when we go to New York for live coverage of the match between the Boston Lobsters with Wimbledon champion Martina Navratilova and the New York Apples with Vitas Gerolaitis. Right now, stay tuned for Rock and Roll Reunion, coming up next on HBO. From the Oakland Coliseum, this is Julie Heldman with Vic Braden saying good night. This has been a presentation of HBO Sports.